each of our patients varies in the size of the muscle whose movement ultimately creates the frown lines. It can be a small muscle mass, a medium muscle mass, or a large muscle mass. It is important to accurately evaluate the muscle mass first in order to choose the correct dosage. We look upon the degree of frowning in muscle mass during the act of frowning and at maximal frown. And in fact, we have found there are four parameters we can use in correlating the dosage to muscle mass and thus to give us a good, complete treatment for our frown itself. Those parameters are first the wrinkle itself, how deep it is and how depressed it is. Secondly, is the inner brow space or the distance between the brows. As it contracts with large muscle mass, the brow space becomes smaller. The third is the glabellar muscle size and shape. Is it bulging or is it distorted at the point of maximal frown? The fourth is the shape and position of the brow itself. Is it depressed as the muscles are pulling down the brow and is it distorted? We can use each of these four parameters to put together a picture of our muscle mass and size that then determines what we are treating, small, medium, or large muscle mass. It is more important to evaluate muscle mass than frown severity in order to come up with the most appropriate dose and thus giving us the ability to use the correct dosage for treating glabellar frown lines. Let's now use our parameters to evaluate the clinical situation of a patient we're treating. Basically, we're looking at muscle mass and we evaluate it in our four parameters. Here we've gone to maximal frown. Notice there's minimal wrinkle lines, very mild depression. There's minimal interbrow space change or there may be none. There's a mild muscle bulging just in that medial brow and also there's slight medial brow depression. This puts us in a category of small muscle mass. Let's evaluate this patient for treatment. We look at the active frowning and maximal frown. Notice there's a minimal wrinkle line, very little depression. The intrabrow space stays the same. There's mild muscle bulging and only a slight medial brow depression. This is a small muscle mass. Let's again look at muscle mass and frown. There's minimal wrinkle lines. There's no change in the inner brow space. There though is a little bit of muscle bulging knowing those corrugators are there, they're working, but they're of small mass. And lastly, very minimal movement, a little medial, but no deviation downward. This correlates to a small muscle mass. Let's evaluate this patient for treatment. We look at the active frowning and maximal frown. Notice there's a minimal wrinkle line, very little depression, but the intrabrow space stays the same. There's mild muscle bulging and only a slight medial brow depression. This is a small muscle mass. Let's evaluate in this patient the act of frowning and the position of the glabella at maximal frown. You'll notice that there is a moderate wrinkle. There's moderate shortening and depression of the intrabrow space. There's also a moderate muscle bulging and there's a significant depression of the medial brow only. This fits into a medium muscle mass. Now let's use the parameters on this particular patient. As we see at rest there are no frown lines but now in the act of frown what we're looking at is first a moderate wrinkle or groove Secondly, there is definitely a shortening or depression of that inner brow space and there's moderate to significant bulging of the muscles. And there's even a distortion of the muscles where you see the corrugators. And in addition to that, look at the brow itself. It is depressed, but it's curved downwards, so there's a distortion and depression of the brow. This is medium muscle mass.
let's evaluate in this patient the act of frowning and the position of the glabella at maximal frown. You'll notice that there is a moderate wrinkle. There's moderate shortening and depression of the intrabrow space. There's also a moderate muscle bulging. And there's a significant depression of the medial brow only. This fits into a medium muscle mass. Here's a younger patient who has good elastic skin showing very little at rest, but she in fact does have medium muscle mass. As we see the act of contracting and maximal frown, you can see the wrinkle. You can also see the shortening and depression of the intrabrow space. You can see the moderate muscle bulging and correction. And also, you can see that significant medial brow depression. She, in fact, is producing a medium muscle mass. Now, let's look at the difference in the frown of this man who has large muscle mass. What does that mean? Well, first in our parameters, we got a deep glabellar groove and furrow. There is significant shortening of the interbrow space, and there's depression, and there's bulging also. There's profound muscle contraction and bulging up to one half the brow distance, and there's also a significant medial brow depression, and you can see the distortion of the brow. This is consistent with large muscle mass. The lateral view further confirms the bulging muscle mass and depression, placing this in large muscle mass category. Evaluating the muscle mass in this patient, we look at the active frowning and that maximal frown. Here we're seeing a very deep glabellar groove or wrinkle, a significant shortening of the inner brow space. There's depression, there's bulging, a profound muscle contraction with bulging of the corrugators and crinkling and bulging of the procerus within the brow, and that bulging is up to one half the brow. In addition to that, there's significant brow depression medially with some distortion of the brow. This is a large muscle mass. Evaluating the muscle mass in this patient, we look at the active frowning and that maximal frown. Here we're seeing a very deep glabellar groove or wrinkle. There is significant shortening of the interbrow space, and there's depression, and there's bulging also. There's profound muscle contraction and bulging up to one half the brow distance, and there's also a significant medial brow depression, and you can see the distortion of the brow. This is consistent with large muscle mass. The lateral view further confirms the bulging muscle mass and depression placing this in large muscle mass category. This fits into a medium muscle mass. This is a large muscle mass. In conclusion, you've seen how these four parameters can be used to evaluate muscle mass and thus correlate to some degree dosage. I hope you found this guide helpful in individualizing the proper dose for your patients.